Should you avoid shotgun microphones for indoor use? The reason I want to address this is I recently put out a series of videos for producing great online audio, my new series. And when I was discussing distance miking indoors, I suggested getting either a small diaphragm condenser or a shotgun microphone. That's where we start to get an issue because I got a bit of pushback on that statement. A lot of people said, no, you should not get a shotgun microphone for indoor use. I have also heard this from a number of other people, Curtis Judd, Sound Speeds, Allen, many people I have heard say you shouldn't use shotgun microphones indoors. I never really understood why. So instead of just blindly testing stuff, I spoke to Sound Speeds, Allen, and I spoke to Curtis Judd. Huge thank you to both of them for sharing their expertise and their knowledge. And based on what they told me, I came up with what I wanted to test to see if we really run into issues using shotgun microphones indoors and if I need to amend my recommendation as far as get a shotgun microphone if you're miking yourself 12 inches away, even if you're indoors. So let's go ahead and jump to some testing and let's hear, should you avoid using shotgun microphones indoors? The first test that I want to do is a standard overhead miking position. So right now I have the microphones about 12 inches from my mouth, overhead angled directly at my mouth. The MKH416 has 37 decibels of gain. The Neumann KMS184 has 40 decibels of gain. I'll be quiet so you can hear the noise floor of each. Also, I want to point out that I have the fronts of the microphones aligned. So the front of the SDC is aligned with the front of the shotgun microphone. This is after discussing with a boom operator by the name of Sound Speeds that for this comparison, I should line up the fronts of the mic. So this is the standard position that should be enough talk in enough of a sample. Let's do a few tests. Now let's do a very basic distance test and see how the shotgun microphone fares against the SDC. So right now I am about 14 inches off of both microphones. I will switch between them and let you hear how it sounds. Does it sound pretty directional? Does one do a better job rejecting the room tone and the reverb? That's what you should be listening for. Let me back up a bit. Now I'm about two feet away from the microphone, so I will switch between the shotgun microphone. This is the MKH416. Now I am on the Neumann KMS184, I believe the cardioid SDC. Here is the MKH416. And again, here is the KM184. That is two feet away. Does one do a better job or a worse job at directionality, making it sound direct? as well as reflect or rejecting the reflections and reverb. And now I'm about four feet away from the microphones. I understand nobody will be or should be miking this far away from a sound source, especially indoors, but I like putting these mics in worst case scenarios to try to understand the limits of them and also try to understand the characteristics because those characteristics become much more apparent when they are put in very stressful and difficult situations. So here is the MKH416. This is the shotgun microphone, which you shouldn't use indoors. And this is the Neumann, hello, Neumann KM184 cardioid small diaphragm condenser. Something that many people say is what you should use indoors. Use a cardioid or hypercardioid SDC as opposed, I switched back to the MKH416, as opposed to using a shotgun microphone. Those are all the distance tests. I don't know if I have more to do or not. I don't know how this was edited. Let's uh, do something.
Now we're doing a little bit of a weird test. I have both microphones pointed directly downwards at my desk, which is a reflective surface. I am also speaking directly at the desk, so my voice is going to be bouncing off of the desk and making its way back into each of the microphones. And the reason I'm doing this is I have heard some people say that you shouldn't use shotguns indoors because of how directional they are. They will almost reach out and grab the reflections. So I wanted to see, does the shotgun actually pick up more reflections of my voice off of the desk, or does it sound the same as the SDC? That should be enough of a sample here. Let's, let's do another one. Now I have both microphones about eye level with me, and they are angled down so I can speak kind of past the sides of them. And the reason I want to try this is I want to see if speaking past the side of the shotgun microphone causes any kind of phase issues, if it causes any issues because of the interference tube. So I will just keep talking and move around the microphones a little bit to see if we get any kind of strange phasing on the shotgun microphone. So I will just keep talking and move around the microphones a little bit to see if we get any kind of strange phasing on the shotgun microphone versus the SDC. Does the interference tube and do all of those slots actually lead to an issue with sounds making it into the sides of it. That's what I wanted to hear with this demo. That's what I wanted to hear with this demo. Now I have these mics in an absolutely horrible setup. I am under booming them and they are not angled at my mouth. They, they are angled directly at my chest and they are about three inches, two to three inches off of the desk. So we should be getting quite a few reflections off of that surface. I'll just go ahead and keep talking and move around and see if we get any kind of phasing issues on either of the microphones. I'll just go ahead and keep talking and move around and see if we get any kind of phasing issues on either of the microphones. If what I have heard is true, then we should be hearing some kind of phasing issues or some kind of worse performance out of the shotgun microphone as compared to the small diaphragm condenser. So this is a terrible situation, but we have one even worse to try out. Finally, you can see my face, but the last test I am doing is I have both microphones pointed directly down at the desk, but they are also directly next to my monitor. Another reason I've heard people say you shouldn't use a shotgun microphone indoors is because of phasing issues. So I wanted to try out a worst case scenario and put them directly next to a super reflective surface and see if my voice coming in from one side and bouncing off of the other side causes any kind of phasing issues on either of the microphones and see if the SDC, which is in cardioid or is cardioid, actually performs better than the MKH416 shotgun microphone. Actually performs better than the MKH416 shotgun microphone. There you go. Those are all of the tests. I would love to hear your thoughts. I would love to hear what you heard in those tests. Did you hear the issues that you were expecting? Did the shotgun microphone perform worse indoors as compared to a cardioid small diaphragm condenser? Once you have done that, I will share what I heard. First thing I noticed... The SDC, the small diaphragm condenser, definitely picked up more reflections, definitely sounded more roomy, definitely had more reverb. That could be easily mitigated by, instead of using the KM184, which is the cardioid, go with the KM185, which is the super or hyper cardioid. But I wanted to go with the more common polar pattern cardioid, so... That was worse than it could have been. I could have improved that by using a different polar pattern SDC. The, thec the second thing I noticed, <laughs> Thuffer and Thakatash. How does that keep happening? I think that, <laughs> I think by actually making a podcast, I am developing a speech impediment. <laughs> this is actually starting to concern me. Why does that continue to happen? 
The second thing I noticed is when you go off axis from a shotgun microphone, you lose so much of the detail. A lot of that top end, a lot of those higher frequencies are just lost. But with the small diaphragm condenser, it retained a lot of that upper frequency detail, and it seemed to be quite a bit more forgiving in terms of having the ability to move around a little bit and not lose that good sound. Shotgun microphones do seem to be, this is no surprise to anybody, they do seem to be incredibly directional. And if you go off axis, if you get off to the side, it is going to be noticeable. With an SDC, a cardioid SDC, you have a lot more wiggle room to go around it and get slightly off axis while still maintaining quite a good sound. The third thing I noticed, I almost did it again. <laughs> there is definitely some disgusting sounds once you get around to the side of the shotgun microphone. Once your voice starts making it into the interference tube at different intervals, I did hear some disgusting frequencies. I did hear that roll off of the higher frequencies. You lose all of that detail. So if you aren't directly on axis, that can be a problem. And if you do have reflections making it into the side of the shotgun microphone, that will also be colored by that disgusting off axis sound, that off axis coloration. So that is... Maybe one big reason why people say that because the sides do sound bad. And if you're next to a reflective surface, that's going to make it into the recording. That terrible sound will be captured. But then we get to number four. This is what I was looking for. When the microphone, when the shotgun microphone and the SDC were near my desk, they both sounded terrible, that is undeniable, but I did start to hear some phasing issues and some comb filtering effects on the shotgun microphone while the SDC still sounded bad, but it didn't have that same kind of out of phasey cancellation artifacting that I heard on the shotgun microphone. So now that I have actually done the testing and heard what people are talking about, I have some thoughts because I understand why people say don't use shotgun microphones indoors, but I am not 100% sold on that blanket statement. I think it's slightly more nuanced than that. If you are a boom operator and you're queuing back and forth and moving around a lot, while you're filming and recording audio, I get it because you may have, have, have to, let's go, <laughs> you may have to put the microphone near a wall, near a ceiling, and you are going to encounter the reflections off of that surface, and then that will color the audio by making it into the side and sounding terrible. You may also get those phasing issues. That is if you are constantly having to move around and follow actors or hosts or whatever. So I understand completely and agree with that completely. Where I don't necessarily agree is if you can just have a static overhead shot and the microphone isn't directly next to any kind of reflective surfaces and your main goal with the microphone selection is reducing the amount of room tone and reflections and reverb that are captured in the recording, I still think a shotgun could probably be the right choice. You could get decent sound with a, an SDC. It's just going to be a little bit roomier. So if you are able to have that static microphone position and it's not next to any kind of any kind of reflective surfaces like a wall or a desk, I think a lot of the issues that I encountered that I heard are kind of avoidable. Or they could be mostly avoided if you're careful with your microphone placement and the environment you're using it in. One issue would persist. That would be the insane directionality of a shotgun microphone. You need to be very diligent about staying on axis because once you start to get off axis, your voice is going to start to hit the side of the interference tube, hit those slots, 
And then that's when I started to hear that kind of funky off-axis sound. So that issue still persists, even if you're away from reflective surfaces. So if you don't care about or want to worry about microphone technique, and you want a little bit more forgiveness, and you're okay with a little bit more room tone and reverb, then I suppose an SDC would probably be the best fit. But that is the conclusion of that. I have been putting that off for a while because I've just been kind of lazy. But I am really glad that I did that because I wanted to actually hear what the issues are. Why people say, don't use shotgun microphones indoors. I understand it now. And I understand who is going to really struggle with those issues. But I think for some people, it still could work. Maybe maybe that's the wrong take. I don't know. But based on my tests, that seems to be that seems to make sense. Let me know what your thoughts are, because I know that's going to be a contentious topic. Should you avoid shotgun microphones for indoor use? Let me know in the comments down below.